Welcome back everyone, macOS Catalina just ended up officially coming out, so let's go and do a basic walkthrough. Actually, it's macOS Monterey, I don't know why I keep saying Catalina. <laughs> We're going to go through a basic walkthrough of the software. Now, this is not going to be every single little tiny thing. You can see we're already on the home page. So we're already past the initial setup and everything. So if you're already on the screen, you should, you know, be able to be following along with this tutorial. Again, it's nothing crazy. Most of you may already know this stuff, but these are the basics of macOS Monterey and essentially how to use it. This is one of the oldest supported devices as well, the MacBook Air. So we'll pretty much have a good understanding of how the performance and everything will run as well. So first of all, what we want to do is essentially most of you know the trackpad at the bottom. So essentially, whenever you move your mouse, you can go ahead and move your mouse like this. Now you can also, if you move it fast, sometimes get into a big mouse mode. So essentially, if you ever lose your tracker, you can just shake your mouse around and you'll pretty much be able to find it just like this. Now, next up, we want to go ahead and actually go look at the menu bar up top. So what this is up here is essentially all of your applications will have mostly a custom menu bar on the left side, but the right side of your menu bar will always stay consistent and you can modify this within the settings. So what we want to do is within the first icon, we can go and click on it and we'll see a bunch of different things. So we can click on force quit. We can go to about this Mac. We can click on system preferences, app store, and all this other and all this other stuff right here. Now, if we go under Finder, you'll see a bunch of other things as well. You'll see About Finder. So this is essentially the app we already have up. Now, within File, Edit, View, Go, again, all these things are a little bit different on each application, so keep that in mind. So in this case, we'll have the Essential Finder app up, which is very important. So that covers it up here. We'll go under the Apple logo, which is always consistent as well in a second. But on the right side, you can see we have a couple of different things. So we have Bluetooth. So essentially, if you click on this, you'll see a bunch of other Bluetooth devices that are connected, which is great. Now, the next up is our battery icon. So if we click here, we can see how much battery life we have left. You can always charge up your MacBook, and it should show you that it's charging and all that good stuff. Battery preferences as well, which we'll get into in a second. Now, the next icon is Bluetooth. So if you ever want to connect to a Bluetooth device, you'll essentially be able to do so with this. Now, next up, we have our Spotlight Search. So if you ever wanted to search for something system-wide on your MacBook, well, you can go ahead and click on System Search, and you can go ahead and search through the whole entire entirety of your MacBook. So if there was a file or a song or whatever that you had on your MacBook, you can go and click here and find it right there, which is really awesome. Now, the next thing is the Control Center. So this is not extremely new, but it's kind of new. So you can see the same thing, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, and AirDrop right here. But you can see to the right, we have this new focus mode. So this essentially, you know, redefines Do Not Disturb, and this is brand new with macOS Monterey. So within here, you can go and configure your focus modes, which are essentially like Do Not Disturb, you know, specifically for certain applications. So it's a cool thing. I'm really happy about it, but you have that capability here, which is really cool. We can click back out, and you can see we have, you know, keyboard brightness, screen mirroring options, we can also control the display brightness within our specific panel here. So if you want to increase or decrease your you know, display brightness, you don't have to click on the keyboard. You can just drag this and make it higher or make it lower just like this. But you can also go ahead and click further into it and see a couple of different things. You can modify your dark mode and you can also turn in night shift. So if you want to turn on dark mode, you can click here. If you want to turn on night shift, which essentially warms your display, you can go ahead and click there as well. So we can go ahead and click out like this. And you can also control the volume of your MacBook as well. So again, instead of hitting on your specific keyboard keys, you can just do it there and it'll be the same thing. Now, if you're playing any music, that thing will come up right here. And that essentially is a basic walkthrough of this. Now, next up, we have our widget bar, aka our notification center. So this right here, so again, if you didn't see, I just clicked up right here. And this is essentially our you know, widget bar and notification center. If we get text messages, if we get other mails or anything like that, they will all be populated here. You'll also get a little notification up here, you know, without even being here, they'll pop up right here if you have it set up. But you can also click here and see all the notifications and everything. But you can also see all of the widgets that you have within macOS Monterey as well. So you can see we have all these different widgets, but you can also click edit widgets and you get even more widgets over here too. So this is another really cool thing. Again, I don't know if a lot of people use this. I don't really use it too often, but I'm sure there are some people who want to, you know, have this capability. Now, as far as I know, you can't bring any widgets on your home screen, which is very annoying, but it's still right here. So all you have to do is just click up here and you'll pretty much come there. Now, next up, believe it or not, we do have our dock at the bottom. So what this is, and sometimes it may be consistent here. I have it set up where I can hit it and it essentially will come up but it's essentially the same type of setup. These are all different applications that you may have on your Mac that you can go ahead and open up later. 
So as you can see right here, we have our Finder application, Settings, Chrome, News, Apple TV, Safari, and the Trash Bin. So with the Trash Bin, it's just like any other Trash Bin. You can go and empty it out and all that stuff. I'm sure everyone knows this by now. Now Safari did get a little bit of an improvement, which we'll go into in a second. But I will be honest, the Finder application, which is this one right here, is probably one of the most important applications you're going to ever use. So like we mentioned before, with most of our applications, we can go ahead and go through and click, you know, Finder and get more details of it. We can click on File, get more details of it here. But essentially, I would probably recommend you to get familiar with this. I will leave a link down in the description that'll give you a full walkthrough of the Finder app. And this is where you may end up, you know, this is where you go ahead and store files in. You can delete files, so many different things. And you can go straight into your applications of your MacBook by clicking on Go and then clicking on when you're in the Finder app and then clicking on Applications and you'll come straight here. So these are all the different applications that you have on your specific Mac, you know, this time Mac West Monterey. And it's another very important thing that a lot of people go through. So again, all your different applications will pull up right here, which is really awesome. But on top of that, like we mentioned before, if you ever want to close out of an app, you can go and click that X button right here. But sometimes the application doesn't actually go ahead and fully close out. If you see a little dot under the application, that technically means that that application is still open. So if I click on open on Finder again, you'll see it opens up. So you can always close out of here, but sometimes you can go and click here and there may be a quit option under some applications. So you can always quit out of it that way too. But exit button works fine here in this case. Now next up, let's go and make our way to our Apple icon. And let's go and click on system preferences. So in this case, under system preferences, you can see we have a ton of different options we can go ahead and modify. So up top, there's some general settings and desktop and screensaver settings you can go and modify right up here. You can go down and you can change out the security and privacy of your MacBook. And there are tons of different options. If I were to go through every single one of these, essentially we would be here for like 90 minutes or something like that. In this case, let's go and click on the general settings right here. So when we go ahead and click on there, we'll see a ton of different options that we can go ahead and modify. You can turn on dark mode, auto mode, so we can turn on and turn off dark mode right here. The default web browser is one I'm sure a lot of you may want to change. So if you have a MacBook and if you use Google Chrome a lot, well, you can go and click here and change it from, you know, Safari to Google Chrome. But Safari is the default, so keep that in mind. And like I mentioned, there are a ton of different settings you can change here. So I'd highly recommend you to look through all of these and kind of configure all the ones that you're familiar with. If you want a certain application, if you want to check your battery, or if you want to go to Time Machine or anything, then you should probably go through these. But most of you may not have to modify any of these, to be honest, during your lifespan. Now, next up, I want to go and click on Finder once more, and I want to go ahead and go under About This Mac. So this is a very important area where you want to probably get familiar with. So right up here, it tells us specifically which specific macOS version we're on. Now under that, it'll go ahead and tell us all this other information about our MacBook or our iMac or Mac Mini or whatever it is. So this is a very important area to be in. You want to familiarize yourself with this area, mostly because if you ever want to figure out which MacBook you have, which iMac you have, or if you're ever planning on reselling your MacBook, you want to make sure that you have the correct information here. So right here tells you exactly which type of MacBook you have, which iMac you have, whichever device you have, but it'll also tell you what version of software you're on. But that's not everything. If you see right here, it tells the system report, which I don't really mess around too much, but the software update panel is a very important panel to be familiar with. So if we click on software update, you will go ahead and see that it'll go ahead and bring us into our software update panel. And you can see that it does tell us that there is a new version of macOS available. So a good rule of thumb is to be up to date on some of the more recent versions of softwares that come out. If you're completely outdated, you're going to have a hard time kind of, you know, being on a stable version of software. So the best thing to do is be on a more recent version of software. You don't have to be on macOS Monterey like every single day. Okay, you don't have to be on the most recent version of software every single time. But it's good habit to essentially update your MacBook every so often, maybe every couple of months. And this is an area where I would highly recommend you, especially if you're on macOS Monterey right now, being on a more stable version of macOS Monterey is an extremely important thing to do. So in this case, that's pretty much what I would recommend you to do is to software update your MacBook. And again, you just have to go on about this Mac. You want to go and click on software update and you should be good to go. Now, that's another pretty big thing. Now, ultimately, another big portion of MacBooks and Macs in general is the internet browser. Now, like we mentioned, we have Google Chrome here. So we can go and open up the Safari browser by clicking here. But also, if you don't see an application here in this drawer, you can always find the little app icon, aka the multiple app icon on your keyboard. So on most keyboards, it's right here where I'm clicking right here, and it'll come into this panel. But you can also go like this on your Magic Trackpad. So just like this on your trackpad, aka like so, and you'll come here too. 
So you'll see a whole list of other applications that you have on your specific MacBook as well. And this is another really, really important thing because you're going to spend a lot of time here as well. So in this case, we'll go and find Safari. We'll go and click on Safari here and we'll come straight into here. So like I mentioned, Safari did get a little bit of an improvement. So you can see our tabs are now here and it looks a little bit more rounded and a little bit more boxy than before. And like I mentioned before, you can see we have a different setup bar up here. And like I mentioned before, we have a different setup bar right up here. So you can see we have file, view, all this other good stuff. So you again, you just want to be kind of familiar with this area and just notice that all these change with every single application. Now, next up, we can go and scroll through here. You know, we can use this in our browser, as most of you may already know. If you want to add a new tab, you can, and it'll go ahead and add a new tab for us. So now we have two different Apple browsers, and you can navigate through them by clicking on this tab or clicking on this tab. If you want to sh ever share out a browser, you can go ahead and click share, and you can share these icons to whoever and pretty much move on from there. Now, if you want to see all the different tabs that you have open, like these tabs and those ones up here, you can always click on this option and see all the tabs that are available as well. So you have that option as, as well, which is really cool. If you want to close out of this tab browser, you can always click the X button and it'll go ahead and exit out for you. You can go and exit out of this option as well. Now, lastly, with the app store, so if we go back into our app panel by clicking this button or swiping up, we can go inside of our app store, which is right here. So when you're here, if you ever want to actually install any applications or anything, you can go straight into your app store and you can download any of these applications that you want. Again, it's not a guarantee that you know the, these applications will be up to date and everything. Mac OS, for some reason, the apps are very outdated most of the time, but you can go ahead and search through all these different apps and download any of these apps that you want. Do keep in mind that if you have an M1 MacBook Pro, you can actually install a lot of iPhone apps as well through the App Store. So if you want to download an app that's supported with iOS and Mac OS, you can search for it here and you can install it that way as well. So that's pretty much it. You know, that is pretty much a basic walkthrough of Mac OS Monterey. Some other things that I'm sure most of you know, creating new folders, you can always double tap right here, click create a new folder. You can change your, you can change your desktop background as well. But these are a majority of the new features and new layouts of Mac OS, you know, Monterey, the new focus modes, share play, Safari browser changes, all that good stuff. So at this point, you should be good to go for the most part. If you guys have any other questions or anything like that, let me know in the comment section below. Hit the like button, that would mean so much, but definitely hit that subscribe button. More importantly than everything else, I love every single one of you guys. Hopefully I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace out till then.